Hey guys, it's John here. Hope you're doing good. Today I am going to be going over some bipartite graph exercises. So before we get started with the exercise, I just want to run through some quick definitions and theorems. So just as a reminder, a simple graph G with a vertex set V and edge set E is called bipartite if one, its vertex set V can be partitioned into two disjoint sets V1 and V2 such that every edge in the graph connects a vertex in V1 and a vertex in V2. In other words, no edge in G connects two vertices in V1 or two vertices in V2. So if a graph has this property, we call these two sets that partition V a bipartition of the vertex set V. So here, in the bottom right corner, I've just drawn a very simple example of what a bipartite graph might look like. So as you can see, we have two sets of vertices, V1 on the left and V2 on the right. And if we look at any two vertices in V1, there are no edges between them. And for any two vertices in V2, there are no edges between them as well, only edges across the two sets. Okay. And here we have two theorems that are going to help us determine quicker whether a graph is bipartite or not. So our first theorem says that a simple graph is bipartite if and only if it is two colorable. So what does two colorable mean exactly? So essentially a graph is two colorable if we can run through the vertices and color them different colors in such a way that if we choose a vertice or a vertex of one color, any of that vertex's neighbors has an opposite color. So for instance, if we wanted to run through this example that I've drawn above, I'll use red and green. So one way to, to color this graph is to just color each vertex in V1 red and each vertex in V2 green. So notice that, again, since this is a bipartition, any red vertices on the left do not share an edge with any other red vertices, only green vertices, and the same for the green vertices. Okay, so that's one theorem that we're going to be using. The other theorem is that a graph is too colorable if and only if all cycles have even length. So this allows us to say that a simple graph is bipartite if and only if all cycles in that simple graph have even length, or there are no cycles of odd length. Okay, so let's move on to the question. So the question asks, which of the following graphs are bipartite? Select all that apply. So these are some of the special graphs that we went over in lecture. Um, so I've drawn these out and I've defined what they actually are. So if you're not sure what these mean, totally fine. We're gonna go over that as well. Um, so let's just walk through each of these one by one and see if they're bipartite using the two theorems that we defined earlier. Okay, so this first graph is a cycle graph. So the C sub six just means that we have a graph that's a cycle of length six. So this is what our C six looks like here. Um, so I'm gonna walk through two different ways that we could possibly see whether or not this is bipartite. The first way is using the first theorem that I defined. So we're gonna to try to two color this. Now, the way that you would typically do this is just pick any starting vertex. It doesn't matter which vertex you pick. I can pick this one and color it one of the colors that you want to use. And then from there, color any of its neighbors, the opposite color that you want to use. So that means what we'll color these two, blue. I'll just be using red and blue from here on out. From here, we color those neighbors red. And then finally, we have to color this one blue. 
And if we can do that without having any contradictions where we have an, a, a vertex that's neighbors with something of the same color, then we can say that it's bipartite. So we've two colored this with no problems. So we can conclude that C sub six is bipartite. So this is a check mark, yes. Another way that we can see this is notice that there's only one cycle in this graph. It's a cycle of length six. Since six is an even number, we know that there are no odd cycles in this graph. So that's another way that we can arrive to the conclusion that this graph is bipartite. All right, so that one's good. Next, we have Q sub three. This is the notation for a hypercube in three dimensions. And note that for any hypercube in n dimensions, we have two to the n vertices. So here we have eight vertices, which is two to the three. So a common way to define these are thinking about them geometrically. So here I've given each vertex a coordinate. So if you think of each vertex as a coordinate in a 3D space, so this one, could be, we can consider the sort of origin being this vertex here, then any, tra any translation going in any direction, any unit direction will get us to another vertex. So another thing to note is that the coordinates for each of these uh, vertex vertices, any neighboring vertex is going to have a difference in coordinates of one. So if we take a look at uh, the origin and maybe this one, it only has a difference of one because it differs in the first coordinate only. And you can notice that for any other two vertices that you look at. So with that in mind, a way that we can partition these vertices into two sets so that it's a bipartition is to put all of the vertices with an even sum of coordinates in one and an odd sum of coordinates in the other. So that way we know that vertices are only neighboring those with a difference of one in their coordinates. So there's no possible way for an even, uh, a coordinate with an even sum of coordinates to be neighboring with another vertex of even coordinates. So that's one way we can determine that this is bipartite. Another way is to just do the two coloring technique, just like before. So I'll pick this one to start with blue. So that means any of its neighbors have to be red. Okay. Now all of their neighbors have to be blue. And finally, we have one left that has to be red. And notice we don't have any contradictions again, which tells us that this is in fact too colorable and bipartite. All right, next on to W sub six, this is a wheel. So one way that you can think of this is a, just take a cycle of length six, just like we had above, add a vertex in the middle, and then connect every vertex in the cycle to that vertex in the middle. And then we'll have a wheel here. So there are a few ways that we can look at this. So the second theorem tells us that if a graph has a cycle of odd length, then it's not bipartite. So notice that you can pick any two vertices that are adjacent to each other on the outer um, edge of this graph. So let's say we just pick these two. If you have those two, then you can create a cycle of odd length by just going through those two and then going through the center and then going back. So this is one example of a cycle of odd length. So we have a cycle of length three here. 
So this graph is not going to be bipartite. So also another way that we can see this is to try and two color it. So if I wanna try and two color it, I think the easiest way to see this is to just start in the middle. Well, if we start in the middle and color it blue, then that tells us that every neighboring vertex has to be red, but it's connected to every other vertex. So every other vertex has to be red. But as soon as we pick two of them that are adjacent, we notice that these two have the same color, which is a contradiction. So we can't actually two color this. So now we've seen two different ways that this is not bipartite. All right, moving on. Next we have K sub five. This stands for complete graph with five vertices, which basically means that we have a set of five vertices. Each vertex is connected to every other vertex in the graph. Um, so just like I did before, I'm just going to pick three of these vertices and note that if you pick any three vertices in this graph, they're going to have a cycle because they're all connected to each other. So pick any three you want, you're going to find a cycle of length three. By the second theorem that I discussed, this is not bipartite. Finally, we have a cycle of length 31. Now, uh, this was way too many vertices to draw out. So I will just use one of the theorems directly to prove that this is in fact not bipartite. So we know that this is just gonna be a cycle, just a circle of 31 vertices, and it's gonna be odd length. So it's gonna be a cycle of odd length. So by the second theorem, we know that this cycle is not going to be bipartite. So the last three are not. So all in all, we've shown that the first two graphs are bipartite and the last three are not using these two theorems here. So as a takeaway, just remember look for cycles of odd length. And if that doesn't work, then try to two color the graph. If that doesn't work, then um, you've got a graph that's not bipartite.